Whether you're thinking about taking the Level 4 Diploma from the Wine and Spirit Education Trust, or if you just want to know more about what's involved in that program, then this video is for you. I'm going to discuss the details of that program, including each of the six units, as well as the expected time commitment for the program. In this video, I'm also going to be discussing some of the techniques that I used to study and prepare for the examinations, and which helped me pass with merit, and that was despite the fact that I was working as a full-time attorney the entire time period. What is the Level 4 Diploma from the WSET? Well, it's an expert-level program that covers all aspects of wine. For most people who get through, it takes somewhere between 18 months to 3 years to complete. And the WSET recommends that you spend approximately 500 hours in the program. How will you spend these 500 hours? Well, about 115 to 120 of the hours will be devoted to class time or to the time spent reading the course books and doing the assigned exercises each week. Another 370 hours will be devoted to study time outside of class. This is where you will learn the material and practice answering exam questions and doing your blind tastings and so forth. The remainder of the time will be devoted to actual examinations. I'll next briefly go through each of the six units and give a high-level overview of what's expected for each unit. Unit 1 is 20% of the overall course, and this class relates to wine production. So in this class, you'll learn all aspects of grape growing and winemaking. For me, I found this course to be particularly challenging because I didn't have a very strong science background. For those who do, this class may be a bit easier for you. Unit 2 relates to wine business. And so in this unit, you'll learn all about the different types of entities that are involved in the wine industry. You'll learn about pricing considerations and cost factors that go into wine pricing. And you'll learn all about wine marketing and some of the various ways that those in the wine industry market wines. This unit is about 10% of your overall grade. And once again, there is no blind tasting for either units one or two. And so these are just written examinations. Units 1 and 2 are also prerequisites to complete the rest of the course, and you'll find that even once you're beyond these units, there are things that you're expected to know when you take examinations in later units. Unit 3, or the Beast, is definitely the hardest unit, so I'm going to come back to that one in just a moment. But first I'm going to discuss Units 4 and Units 5. These two units relate to sparkling wines and fortified wines, respectively, each of them are only about 5% of your overall grade. And in both units, you have a written examination and a tasting examination, each of which are about 50% of the time and 50% of your grade. For example, each of these examinations for units four and five will be about 90 minutes long, with 45 minutes devoted to the theory and 45 minutes devoted to the tasting. Particularly the fortified wine course I found to be somewhat challenging as it was a lot of new material but there is a relatively modest amount of information, and so you're able to power through it and really kind of grind it out just because there's not that much to learn, at least not compared to Unit 3. Unit 6 is a research paper. This research paper will be about 3,000 words maximum, so it's not that long. This is about 10% of your overall grade. It's very, very difficult to get distinction on this paper, but it's not that difficult to pass it. So this is definitely something that you should be able to get through with no problem at all. But this particular paper does have a bunch of nitpicky requirements, and so it is important that you follow all the directions and do exactly what it is that they're asking you to do as part of the paper. Next up is Unit 3, Wines of the World, which is also known as the Beast. It's known as the Beast because the text is 600 pages, and this is 50% of your overall grade. So there's an extraordinary amount of information, and the examination topics can be quite narrow. So you can't just focus on the biggest portions of the text and expect that you'll be prepared for the exam. The examination for Unit 3 spans two days. The first day covers theory, and there's two different exams or papers that day. The first of which is about two hours worth of essay questions, and then you'll have a lunch break, and then you'll have another session that lasts another 80 minutes or so. Then the second day of examinations for Unit 3 will be blind tastings. You'll have 12 wines that you need to taste blind, and they'll be divided in half. So you'll have six of them for one paper, and six of them for the second paper. And each of those papers will be about 90 minutes long. So altogether you'll have three hours examination on day two. 
how did I prepare for the exams? Well, it was definitely important to do all the assigned reading and to the discussion exercises for each chapter. This was important, at least in part, because some of the discussion exercises had questions that were very similar to the exam questions. And in fact, in some instances, they were exactly the same. And so if you get lucky, you may be able to have a question on the exam that you've already worked out an answer to in some of your coursework. More importantly, however, doing the coursework helps to reinforce the reading, which helps you to retain that information for a longer period of time. For that reason, I also found it very helpful to create my own flashcards or outlines for the course material as well. In so doing, and by preparing my own writing, that helped me to retain this information a lot more than if I would just rely on something that I read and would go back and reread it repeatedly. Perhaps most importantly, you also have to be able to understand everything. While it's essential that you memorize everything and you know all the facts in the text, it's not sufficient. You definitely have to be able to explain things and understand it thoroughly so that you can do so. As mentioned, there's an extreme time constraint, and so you don't have time to think things through in detail during the examination. You really have to have this information down cold and be comfortable working with it regularly. For example, you need to know why winemakers in a certain region plant certain grapes. And you'll have to know the various factors both in the vineyards and in the winemaking facility and the impact that each of those factors has on the finished wine. You'll also need to understand thoroughly each of the different grapes that are used for wine production as well as the regions in which they're produced and you'll have to understand the distinction between producing bulk wine or high quality wine or premium wine and all the different factors that you would use both in the vineyard and in the winery with respect to each of those various options. One problem that I found with the text, for example, is that it just goes through each different region and each different country sequentially. And so it's not always possible to be able to readily understand big picture themes just by reading the text sequentially. And so what I found is that it was extremely useful to prepare various lists and outlines. So for example, I prepared a list of all the regions that are well suited for production of bulk wines, and also those that are well suited for the production of high quality wines. This was also useful with respect to climates. So for example, I made different lists that would show the various regions and countries that had either Mediterranean climates or continental climates and so forth. And perhaps most importantly, one of the most valuable things that I did is prepare a separate outline for each different grape variety that was used for the production of some of the wines in the text. I set forth each of the characteristics, the different hazards applicable to that particular grape, whether it was early or late budding, early or late ripening, and also all the regions in which that grape was grown and used to make wines. This was definitely the most valuable part of the exercise that I did in my self-studies, but it was also extremely time-consuming. A few other quick tips that helped me along the way. First, it helps to be able to teach others the material. For example, when I was covering a particular topic, I might organize a tasting along that theme and have some of my friends over and then explain that material to them as well. That helps to reinforce the material, which helps to, to commit it to memory and understand it better. Another thing I found to be useful was to consult the Level 4 specification from the WSET, which sets forth a lot of the objectives and the learning that you're expected to do at each point along the way. The WSET also puts out examiner's reports, and these are reports that analyze the test results for each particular unit, and they explain in detail why some of the students passed or some of the students failed. And reading these examiner's reports will help you to think like an examiner and help you to prevent some of the mistakes that other students have made in the past. Level 4 is definitely a big step up from Level 3. Just to give you an example, even for Unit 1 of Level 4, I had twice as many flashcards as I prepared for all of Level 3. It is manageable, however, especially for all the units with the exception of Unit 3. So I recommend just taking the units one at a time and saving Unit 3 for last. While this video is focused more on the theory portion of the exam, if you're interested in learning more about the tasting portion of the examinations, be sure to check out the link in the pinned comment below.